How Hawaii is planning to bring tourism back. I'm Chris. This is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. This video, it's a live stream. So if you're watching the live stream, I'm looking forward to hanging out with y'all for about the next 45 minutes or so. If you're watching the archive, we'll make sure to subscribe, click the bell, or turn notifications so you catch these future live streams in the future. And by the way, if you're going to be looking at the archive and you say, gosh, this thing's 45 minutes, why is it so long? Well, the first 15 minutes will be going over the content. And then the uh, later part of it will be question and answers. And you'll know it's question and answer time because there will be the spinning question mark right here in question and answer time. So Hawaii is uh, obviously a big tourist destination. Tourism makes up 23% of the state of Hawaii's economy. Uh, and since there's been no travel, travel is down to Oahu, 95%. Travel is down to the rest of the states, 99%. They're having huge unemployment in Hawaii. Unemployment is over 30% in Hawaii. And so they are trying to figure out how do they bring travel back. Uh, and one of their uh, representatives to the government released this document titled Making Hawaii Safe for Travel, Recommendations to Reopen Hawaii's Visitor Industry. So this is what we'll be going through today, looking at Hawaii's recommendations or what they're planning or how they are planning to open. And so this, as with everything with COVID-19 and coronavirus and lockdowns and dates, everything is subject to change. Uh, but currently, Hawaii is under a uh, like quarantine order for incoming travelers until the end of June. So through June 30th, any visitor to Hawaii needs to quarantine for 14 days. If that's someone who lives in Hawaii, they need to quarantine at their home. If it's someone who is uh, being a tourist to Hawaii or someone who doesn't have a home, then they have to quarantine in their hotel room, not hotel, hotel room only for 14 days. Can't leave, have to have food delivered in. So uh, obviously that's what's really led to the sharp decline in tourism for Hawaii. Uh, and if, actually they've said, uh, we don't want any tourists right now, please don't come. But that is not a sustainable perspective for Hawaii. And so uh, this is one way that they're looking to reopen. And uh, so in this document, uh, I'll first go with the few things that it lays out. And uh, so here, here's what they're suggesting. So they are suggesting, and by the way, this is all just plans, suggestions, thoughts. These are not in law yet, uh, but these are just what the various parts of government Hawaii are thinking. So the thought is uh, a traveler would buy a ticket to Hawaii and then um, – 72 hours before their flight, they would go to a local drugstore or a clinic for testing. What kind of testing? COVID-19 testing. They would go get – they are asking travelers to get tested for COVID-19 before traveling to Hawaii. Uh, the clinic would then electronically communicate the results to the patient and the airline. So the patient and the airline would know whether the uh, potential traveler is – positive or negative for COVID-19. Uh, travelers that test positive will be able to get a full refund on tickets uh, and reminded of the 14-day mandatory quarantine. Um, departure, so the, past, the traveler would then depart from a non-Hawaii airport. Uh, in flight, they would fill out this required tracking form, their hotel, their address, their cell phone number, where they're staying. Uh, upon arrival, all the passengers that have been pre-tested and are negative are allowed to leave the gate. Uh, untested or symptomatic travelers will need to stand by under National Guard supervision and be tested in dedicated areas. And we'll talk more in detail about what all these steps look like as we go uh, through it. Negative tests are free to resume the trip. Positive tests are sent to state quarantine or allowed to return to point of origin if the airline will transport them back. So that's the eight-step process uh, that they are looking at. So let's go through this in a little bit more detail. So why might Hawaii be looking to put such um, stringent measures into place? If you've been watching my uh, Las Vegas videos recently, you'll know that uh, Las Vegas is planning to reopen with not quite so stringent perspectives. Las Vegas is looking to do uh, temperature checks in the casinos. They'll be looking for system. They'll be looking for symptoms, uh, but they won't be doing COVID-19 tests before people come to Las Vegas. So why why does Hawaii want everybody to be tested before coming? 
Well, one of the things that they actually uh, lay out in this document is they say, well, as an island state um, and one of the most remote places in the world, they could easily become overwhelmed by COVID-19. So it's really important that they aggressively insist on testing travelers within 72 hours of their departure to Hawaii. Uh, they also suggest that Great Britain has announced they are going to require testing of air travelers. Uh, Taiwan requires testing of travelers from uh, high-risk areas. And although those are countries, uh, they are islands much like the state of Hawaii. Um, by the way, I know on the live stream today, uh, Mark is watching and it's his birthday. So happy birthday to you, Mark. Um, Unicorn says, uh, I'd rather go through the steps as well. Yeah. And what are the thing, if you go through it, then you know that everybody goes through it. So there's some sense of safety along with that. Uh, and that was the title I put in the thumbnail was safe Hawaii. And that's really what they're going for is they're trying to market Hawaii as one of the safest, uh, destinations. Christine points out that Hawaii is strict on anything coming in. All animals have to be quarantined. Hawaii is free of diseases like rabies, uh, and there are also no snakes there. They are illegal. Very good point. Um, and uh, so, uh, what am I? What am I drinking today? I actually, I actually have two beverages today. Uh, one beverage I have today is uh, some Hawaiian Sun Guava Nectar because, hmm. This is um, like a quintessential island drink, and I love guava. And in my last live stream, I asked, hey, when I get to 200,000 subscribers, what should I do? And somebody said I should drink a beer. Well, I can do that now. OC Girl, could you, could you pass me the beer? Yeah, OC Girl's got a beer for me right here. Thank you very much. So this way I can actually drink a beer on a live stream. And when I do drink beer, actually, uh, I really love the Japanese beer. So here's a little bit of uh, Sapporo premium beer, which surprisingly goes pretty well with guava nectar. Uh, all right. So now uh, going more in detail into this, um, their goals are to bring the visitor industry back to strength and keep Hawaii virus free. Uh, and uh, basically, they say we cannot open, we cannot reopen tourism without COVID-19 tests for all arrivals. Um, and they really want to advertise Hawaii as COVID-19 free, suggesting that travelers uh, will pay a premium for airfare and accommodations, knowing that a rigorous testing system is in place. And then, of course, Hawaii, from a state perspective, says they owe it to their employees in the visitor industry to make sure that those employees uh, are safe and their families are infection-free as well. Uh, now, in detail, the testing framework. So, uh, oh, and by the way, Spun... Uh, says that, wait, snakes are illegal. Uh, snakes are illegal in Hawaii. And um, so Guam, which is another uh, Pacific Island part of the U.S., uh, some snakes got into Guam and, like, took over Guam. And actually, Guam has no birds on the island because the snakes have eaten all of the birds. Uh, so Hawaii really wants no snakes to come in because if snakes come in, they could easily uh, just take over. Oh, and by the way, Vic asks and says, where did I get the Hawaiian drink? I got this Hawaiian Sun um, at a supermarket called Tokyo Central. It's a um, Japanese supermarket. But it's owned by a Japanese chain called Don Quixote, which also open, runs uh, supermarkets in Hawaii. Um, so it's quite tasty. Makes me feel like the islands, too. By the way, I hope you're also appreciating, instead of the fireplace today for this Hawaiian theme, I've got some shots of Hawaii scrolling here in the background. All right. So uh, in this uh in this document, right, in this document that says making Hawaii safe for travel, they have their... 10-step COVID-19 testing framework. And uh, so the first thing is that actually in order to enforce this, the governor of Hawaii would need to petition the federal government to require all Hawaii-bound passengers be tested prior to their arrival. Uh, but until then, 
they're going to implement these following steps, which is uh, request that air travelers be tested. This is what Hawaii is going to do. Uh, travelers can then get the rapid test. Those tests are transmitted electronically. They really want travelers to receive that full refund of airfare. When travelers board the airplane, they'll also get a temperature screen, uh, and they'll have those negative COVID-19 test results. Now, uh, Hawaii says while they cannot legally mandate testing nor infringe on one's right to travel, meaning that they can't force pre-departure testing, uh, and they even can't force testing when people arrive to Hawaii, they can ensure travelers are aware of the consequences of not being tested prior to arrival. Uh, and they'll inform travelers they'll have a final chance to obtain their COVID-19 test at the airport when they arrive in Hawaii, uh, or they will be subject to a quarantine for 14 days. Now, the document says that testing at the airport in Hawaii will likely be cumbersome and could take up to 12 hours and if the traveler tests positive, they will be quarantined. Actually, this is something to think about for destinations that do this and why if you were traveling to someplace like Hawaii or even Iceland, uh, which Iceland is going to start offering COVID-19 tests on arrival. Well, if you if your trip was only going to be a week, but you get tested and you're positive, then you might end up being there for two weeks because you'll have to be quarantined for 14 days. So uh, you need to make sure you have funds available for that quarantine. Um so Hawaii says their first preference is uh, for tests prior to departing for Hawaii, uh, but at the airport, uh, they are suggesting that the Hawaii National Guard uh, oversee the effort. Well, it's the U.S. National Guard, but the U.S. National Guard that's in Hawaii. Uh, and they're suggesting that they use the Abbott Rapid Testing Machines. Uh, these are the machines that can do uh, like four tests per hour. So if they have 100 machines, then they can do about 10,000 a day. Um, now, they're also going to have the National Guard assist in the enforcement of the quarantine or they're planning or suggesting to, uh, and that the quarantine must be strict. Um, and that the quarantine in Hawaii right now really isn't that strict. They collect addresses. They have them stay in hotels. Um, but you've probably seen the news that travelers have left quarantine. They've been out taking pictures. Some have faced fines. Some have faced jail time. Uh, but currently, the quarantine isn't really enforced uh, that strictly. Um, so by employing the National Guard, they think that will be more strict. They're even looking at potentially saying, uh, setting aside a few quarantine hotels and saying all the people in this hotel are under quarantine so that they can actually pay attention to where they all are. Um, and in addition to testing before arriving, uh, they're also gonna require, or they want to require, all visitors on the island to then get tested uh, every seven days by a local testing facility. And then to ensure the safety of the airport, um, they want people who are departing Hawaii to also get tested for COVID-19 before leaving. And then everybody who works in the visitor industry, meaning everybody who works in the airport, everybody who works in hotels, anybody who works at rental car companies, they want them to be tested once a week as well. Uh, and that testing uh, should be free to the employees of those organizations and uh, coordinated by the employer and their respective labor groups. Kathy says, yeah, I don't mind having to be tested if it means I can get to go to Hawaii, right? And under the current thing where they've said, hey, uh, June 30th, everybody's quarantined for 14 days. Well, you probably uh, don't don't want to that. Um, all right. Uh, and uh, Joseph says, yeah, there's actually really good deals to go to Hawaii right now. Southwest Airlines has a nonstop flight for $147 from San Diego. That That is a pretty good deal, I have to say. Um, and uh, so Carlos uh, wants to know how many times I've been to Hawaii and tell Topher I said hi. He's my favorite panda in the world. All right, Carlos. Uh, Topher, uh, Carlos says uh, aloha to you since it's the Hawaiian-based live stream. Uh, how many times I've been to Hawaii? I don't know, 10, 15, something like that. Uh, quite a number of times I think I've been to Hawaii. Uh, all right. <coughs> so now... Uh, in the document, they say, well, what's the, 
really what's the feasibility of this? Is this possible? This is what you might be thinking to yourself and what other people have been thinking to yourself. And uh, so this company called Avid, they've been uh, ramping up production and uh, they're currently manufacturing 50,000 tests per day, this company is, and they plan to increase that capacity to 2 million a month uh, by June 2020, obviously to support places like Hawaii and other places. They've sent these various machines to different counties in Hawaii so that these counties can begin to evaluate them. There's also uh, some other companies that offer uh, those similar tests. Um, so the other reason why they need to do this, we talked about this, to say that Hawaii wants to be a safer place to visit. They say they need to overcome the psychological barrier or the fear of contracting COVID-19 uh, by those that are thinking about visiting Hawaii, also those that are returning to work. Uh, and so there's sometimes the saying, uh, if they build it, we will come. Well, they're also saying in Hawaii, if, if travelers don't feel safe, they, they won't come. And then there's this interesting footnote about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you've never heard of this, uh, it's this kind of uh, pyramid about things that we need. We need food, we need shelter, and feeling safe is one of our basic and evolutionary needs. Uh, and so for this reason, products must not only be sold to us with strong indications that they'll protect us from potential threats, protect they must not just say they protect from potential threats, but they must also back up these claims with clear evidence that they do, um, which is why we're seeing a lot of airlines just clean everything and be really clean because they want people to know that they're trying to be as safe uh, as possible. So um, the, the framework that they're suggesting really uh, starts with the psyche of people trying to decide when, if, and where they will travel. And speaking of that, there was a, there's this document that I have here, which is from the, um, it's the Hawaii Tourism Association COVID-19 update. And so in this, in this document, they show uh, like passenger counts right here. And these are the international passenger counts. The pink are the passenger counts from last year, and the blue are the passenger counts from this year. So you can see there's like nobody going to Hawaii right now. But they also look at just not people going to Hawaii. They also look at um, travel agency bookings for future trips to Hawaii. And if we look at this right here, these are travel agency bookings to Hawaii for future arrivals. Uh, the the like the line on the top is the bookings in 2019 in like uh, you could see 10,000 bookings, 7,000 bookings a month, and then the black line is how many bookings. Uh, roughly this month, and you can see that starting from April, nobody is booking trips to Hawaii. So, because uh, nobody knows when they can go, uh, nobody knows when it'll be safe. Nobody knows when travel opens up again. How can you pick a date? How can you book flights? Um, so. They also cite that a recent study of Americans indicate a small number of people will be traveling between now and the end of 2020, with the year 2021 as the time that most people feel that they'll likely uh, travel or begin vacation again. So I'm curious, for those of you on the live stream, what are you thinking? Are you thinking you might travel in 2020, or are you thinking you want to wait till uh, 2021 to travel? Uh, Melissa says... Uh, I work at a travel agency and it is hurting. I believe it. Um, Asher Bravo says, where do you find those documents? Uh, I think if you would just Google Hawaii Travel Association COVID-19 update, you'll find the one that has all of these graphs. Uh, and the main one that I'm going through, the, the where did the front page of it go? I don't know. I think if you just Google making Hawaii safe for travel, uh, you'll find this other main document. Um yeah, Mark said the Hawaii Tourism Association said uh, that it could take hotels a month to get up and running. Uh, they'll need to rehire and retrain staff. Do you know if that process has started? I don't believe that process has started yet um, because uh, the current right, quarantine situation goes through June 30th. And so that's going to be right. And then they don't know if the governor is going to extend it again because this is still a proposal as opposed to this is what we're going to do. So I think 
most of the resorts, which uh, if, for those of you that maybe aren't following it, most of the resorts and hotels in Hawaii are just closed and shut down. Um, so it's going to be a while till they come back. Um, Kathy says they're hoping, uh, she's hoping to go uh, in January of 2021. Harley uh, is hoping to travel in 2020. Rosie's not going till 2021. Daniel's waiting till 2021 uh, as well. Uh, Q isn't going anywhere while there's draconian restrictions. Uh, Susie has their annual trip to Lake Tahoe booked for the end of November. Hopes we'll be able to go. Uh, blue is the colors going soon to Vegas. All right, that's pretty exciting. Uh, and uh, Milko has canceled as well. So I uh, guess for those of you on the live stream, uh, you are definitely a microcosm of that study. So uh, thank you. Thank you for your um, thoughts. Uh, all right. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay. So now speaking of safety, uh, when they look at Hawaii, Hawaii scores high in safety when they ask people, hey, how safe do you think a tourist destination is? And um, so Hawaii scores high compared to other places around the world. Hawaii, related to COVID-19, uh, has enjoyed some of the lowest infection and death rates of the COVID-19 virus, but so have places like Thailand, New Zealand, Taiwan, and American Samoa, which actually American Samoa has not had a single case of COVID-19. Why? They've just like shut entirely to people coming in. Uh, but uh, the virus, some of these other virus safe destinations are not major tourist attractions. American Samoa, for example, um, they will attract potentially more visitors now because they are safe. So their goal is to keep Hawaii at the top of the list of the safe places to visit. Uh, and of course, they say that naysayers will try to promote a type of hypothesis that testing or not testing will make no difference to our visitor industry uh, or for the local workers, and uh, that people also claim that COVID-19 tests taken prior to boarding um, People could also be exposed on the plane because of re-exposure in that time between the tests. Uh, but uh, what they propose is you, you actually you actually have to start somewhere. And a lot of these proposals propose that the task is too massive, it's too hard, we can't do contract tracing. Um, but uh, what they propose is they say that uh, not testing passengers um, – sends a message that uh, residents, that their residents are not important, uh, that travel, the tourists are not important, and that also if they don't test, that the local hotel and, in, and visitor industry will feel threatened by tourists who may be virus carriers. And if a second wave of COVID-19 is caused by untested tourists, there will be anti-tourist sentiment in the community. And, if, and if, you, if you didn't know, and I'm sure anybody who's watching this from Hawaii knows uh, that there definitely is anti-tourist sentiment in Hawaii, even though the Hawaii economy runs on tourism. There's a lot of this local versus tourists. Uh, and actually, um, you know, there's, right, like Hawaii has a really kind of terrible past about whaling ships and cargo boats coming in that like devastated the native population because they brought viruses um, on the island of Molokai, which is one of the smaller islands. Uh, locals have protested the arrival of visitors that might have brought COVID-19. And so there's potentially a very volatile Hawaii situation with a backlash against visitors if they're suspected to actually have the virus. And so um, they say that testing won't be 100% effective, but it does have the best probability of protecting Hawaii against outside carriers to our shores. Um, and uh, so that's, um, you know, the other thing I mentioned earlier is um, about uh, the, uh, the quarantine hotels they were talking about with the National Guard. And so that was actually something where they might be proposing that visitors end up in these hotels uh, they get an air-conditioned room, they get a TV, they get three meals a day provided for them, uh, and uh, and that might be one that, like, the state of Hawaii would pay for, uh, but again, those are proposals. Uh, so with that, that brings us to Q&A time, so we'll turn on the question mark right here and see what questions you all have. Uh, all right, and uh, Leslie says, hi, Chris, I love you. 
Uh, thank you, Leslie. I appreciate it. That's very kind of you for your love. Um, Vic says, I wonder what Hawaii will do with the cruise ships. Uh, yeah, cruise ships, I think the earliest they're coming back is August. And I imagine probably Hawaii will not be one of the immediate places that cruise ships come back to. Um, Sahil says, my wife Maria was born in Hawaii. She says they are generally very friendly people. What do you think, Chris? I, I think they are friendly. Like, I think that Hawaii Hawaiians are some of the friendliest people anywhere. There really is this thing about the aloha spirit. Um, but as I did mention earlier, there is this thing about locals versus non-locals. And there's a lot of tourists that come to Hawaii that really don't respect respect the local culture and really don't respect their heritage sites. Um, and so I think um, I think in those situations, then Hawaiians can seem unfriendly only because they want people to come uh, to actually respect them and respect their culture. Uh. All right. Uh, John says, I heard they reopened in July. Uh, I... They, they being Hawaii, the current quarantine order goes through June 30th before it went through May and then June. And, and so, I mean, it's it's like it keeps continually getting kicked down the line. So there's no date that these new uh, things would actually go in place. Uh, Yoshi says, uh, Chris, can you please call me Nick, please? Uh, Yoshi, I will call you Nick right now, but it confuse everybody when I bring up your chat in the future because your name says Yoshi and I call you Nick and everybody else would be like, who are you talking to? Um, Asher uh, says, how old is your daughter? Our little explorer is uh, a little over five months, uh, almost six months now. It's amazing. Five months, almost six months. You know, people always say that. Uh, I'm sure you all could do that math as well. Um, Sahil wants a shout out to uh, his wife, Maria, having a child soon and will name it after you or Panda. Oh, Sahil, thank you very much. Uh, that's awesome. Well, congratulations to the both of you. Million Mile Drive says, I would drive to Hawaii if it was possible. That would be awesome if it was possible. That would be like a really long bridge. Sophie's plan to go in September. Uh, good deal. Um, Lee uh, says, I'm getting married in August. Should my future wife get tested? Uh, that's up to you. I mean, I, I think if you if – you <coughs> if if you know her and uh, she's not sick and you've been together a lot, I, I I don't think the two of you need to get tested if you've been around a lot. Um, Olivia K gives a note says uh, you cannot drive around Hawaii without a GPS navigator. Their street names change abruptly. I was so confused while I was driving around uh, when I was there. Yeah, and they're pretty windy. Just the geographic features. I mean, I think a GPS is important for driving in any location you're not from. Uh, Milko says, isn't Hawaii a bummer because of the high expectations of tourists? I don't think Hawaii is a bummer. Do you mean like people get to Hawaii and they're bummed out by what they see when they get there? I mean, I've, I've never been bummed out getting to Hawaii. Like, and maybe, you know, like I actually think their beaches are really good. Their food is really good. I think sometimes where people get bummed out by Hawaii is when they go to um, Waikiki and that's the only place they go and they don't get out of Waikiki. They're like, this place is so busy. This place isn't relaxing. This place doesn't look anything like what I see there. Waikiki is like Las Vegas along the sea. Uh, and so if you're looking for like a relaxing destination with no people, that is not Waikiki. If you're looking for a relaxing destination, uh, that would be like Kauai, Maui, some of those places. Waka89 says, where's Topher? Uh, the Yellow Productions crew is right back here. So you can choose to say hi. Uh, maybe, maybe you would like to say hi to, uh, little Topher right here. So, hey, right there. Uh, and, uh, Yoshi asks, uh, where is Columbus? Columbus is in the other room uh, where our little explorer is right now. Uh, by the way, Columbus is the panda on my second channel, the Office Survival Guide channel. I'm Chris. He's Topher. The other one's Columbus, which looks very much like this one. Uh, and together we make Christopher Columbus, the intrepid explorer. So that's where that name comes from. Vegas Smooch says, open up Hawaii, look at Japan. First COVID case 
January 16th in Greater Tokyo, 39 million population, no shutdown, no social distancing, tested a little bit, 830 deaths. Uh, Japan is doing pretty good. They sure are. Uh, Christine wants to know, what's my favorite island? Uh, Chris, tip, don't drive through uh, Nanakuli on Oahu in a rental car. They'll chuck rocks at it. I'm sorry that happened to you, Christine. That sounds like a drag. Uh, I've not driven through there. Uh, my favorite island, my favorite island is uh, Oahu because uh, I'm a foodie, and so I love the food on Oahu. For beaches, it's Maui, uh, and if I just want to be by myself, then it's Kauai since uh, there's like more chickens on Kauai than there are people. But if I had to pick one, uh, it's Oahu, and Oahu is the one that um, like I've been to the most and I go back to the most. Uh, I heart Michelle says, pray for us. We're traveling to Maui in December for our wedding anniversary. We've never been to Maui, only Oahu twice, and I can't wait to see what Maui looks like. I heart Michelle, if you've not checked out my Maui videos or anybody who's watching this live stream or the archive of it, uh, I have like 30 videos on Hawaii on a lot on Oahu, Maui, and Kauai. Uh, in the link in the description below, you'll find a link to my Hawaii playlist, so you'll find all those videos. Uh, so if you haven't checked out my ones on Maui, you can certainly find that. I've got ones on Cheap Eats, and then I've kind of broken up my travel guide onto South Maui and North Maui. Um, where I'm curious, where are you staying as you're going to Maui? Uh, Charles really likes Maui. Yeah, Maui is known as like the quintessential honeymooners island or anniversary island, definitely a couple's island. Uh, Maui, uh, I think, is more expensive uh, to stay at than Oahu because everything you're eating at in Maui is mostly at these high-end resorts if you're staying kind of stuck in one of those uh, areas. Sahil wants to know if I hate it when people on Zoom meetings are on mute and don't know it. My wife Maria does this all the time. I think it's kind of funny. I, I like assuming it's for a short time and they figure it out. If they can't figure it out, then uh, yes, it's annoying. Um, OC Steve says uh, to remember that Hawaii today has low infection rates due to the population size and strict quarantine. For sure, because uh, not many people have come in and out. Uh, that is indeed why their numbers are low. Uh, Emmett says, I heard seeing the volcanoes isn't worth the crazy long walk. Your thoughts worth it? Uh, I've, I've probably decided that it's not worth it because I've never been to the big island or the island known as Hawaii, which is the island that has the volcanoes. Um it has kind of the least touristy attractions, and um, yeah, I don't know. Just uh, lava, lava doesn't excite me all that much. So that's the one Hawaiian island I have not been to. Uh, Sahil wants to know if Hawaii is straight up chill. It can be. I mean, one of the things I really like about Hawaii as a destination is it does make you kind of like the whole – stress of the world kind of melts away when you go to Hawaii. Uh, and in particular, like, like there's this um, notion of island time or Hawaiian time that like when you're on, on, when you're in Hawaii, uh, it's like, you know, Hey, what time's dinner? What time's this? People are like, ah, you know, whenever, like, cause you're on, you're on island time. You don't need to get there right away. If it's late, you're kind of okay. And and that's actually something where if you're in Hawaii and you try to live by the clock, maybe like you usually do, or you, you try to live by your yellow watch that you usually have, uh, you'll get frustrated uh, because things don't work that way. <laughs> and so, but if you just kind of learn to relax a little bit more, take things in a stride, you know, I think the drivers in Hawaii are some of the most polite drivers ever. Like on the freeway, they actually like let you merge in and they, they throw you like the shaka sign to be like, yeah, it's cool. Go on in. Um, so I think that's pretty neat. Um, I heart Michelle, uh, going to Maui is staying at the Weston. All right. I think you will like the Weston. I heart Michelle. Uh, I've not stayed there, uh, but walking through the property, I think that's one of the nicest ones. Uh, Yoshi says, I can't wait for my neck gator. Can you please reshare it? Uh, I will reshare it Yoshi within time. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for buying the uh, Yellow Production swag and sending me the picture. I always love pictures uh, from all of you fellow explorers, and Yoshi sent me his uh, just a couple days ago. MP says, my boss goes to Hawaii for four weeks every December. Last year, he pulled his rental car on the side of the road and got stuck in quicksand. Have you ever heard of this before? I I've heard of a lot of people getting their cars stuck in Hawaii. It's actually one of the reasons why when you get a rental car, they basically make you sign this thing that says you're not going to take it off road, that you will only stay on paved roads uh, because cars get stuck uh, so many times. 
Um, April uh, says, once I saw a sticker on a car that said, when I left Hawaii, I cried. Uh, that's hilarious. Um, Missy uh, wants to know, where is the best place to go surfing? It depends what kind of surfing. If you want to do like beginner surfing, Waikiki is a great place for beginner surfing, for like longboarding because they're big waves. Uh, if you love like um, big waves, right, then that's the north shore of Oahu where the waves get really big, but that's only for serious surfers. Uh, a beach on Oahu called Sandy Beach is really popular for um, body surfers uh, and body boarders as well. I personally don't really like to surf and uh, I don't really like to surf or bodyboard in Hawaii because I don't like the coral bottoms. Um, I've had too many abrasions in Hawaii. I like sand bottom beaches. So when I go to Hawaii, I generally just swim. Like I love to swim in the water. The water's so warm. Uh, and one of my favorite beaches for swimming uh, is Ko'olina on Oahu, which is where the Disney Aulani Hotel is. Uh, Milko wants to know what will be our first travel destination after the lockdown. Probably someplace nearby, probably someplace like a park. We might do a driving trip along the California coast. Las Vegas is always there. Uh, probably one of our big trips will be to Taiwan. Um, Tokyo Spin says, here in Japan, ANA has announced stringent rules for flying with them, masks to be worn by everybody, uh, or they will not be allowed on board. Do you think this will be implemented by other airlines? Tokyo Spin, it is definitely being implemented by other airlines. Uh, if you've not seen my video, like a live stream I did about two weeks ago, titled uh, something like Face Masks and Blood Tests or the New Travel Normal. Uh, most of the big American airlines, United, Delta, American, uh, Southwest, have announced they are requiring face masks uh, on board as well. Um, so I think I think that'll be a like a new travel normal for a while. Since Tokyo Spin, since you're from Japan, I thought I'd drink my uh, Sapporo beer here. So cheers. You always have to do that after drinking beer, right? I have to do that. Like, I drink the beer. You're like, Chris, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. ah, right, you have to have the... Ah. Um, Vic asks if I've ever visited the Latter-day Saints uh, Hawaii Temple. I sure have, actually. One of my favorite attractions in... Uh, on Oahu is the Polynesian Cultural Center, which is run by the Church of the Latter-day Saints, uh, and they do do a temple tour. Uh, so, yes, we have visited there. Um, Sahil says, my video review of the Hawaii Hotel I like best was my best work, Chris. Thank you, Sahil. Uh, the name of the hotel is the Ondas. Uh, the Ondas in Maui uh, is probably my favorite hotel in the world. Um, so uh, if you're going to Hawaii and you want to stay in my favorite hotel anywhere, uh, that's the one to do. Uh, Yoshi Elevators wants to know, what am I giving away today? Uh, today, I'll be giving away a Yellow Productions Crew t-shirt, which, uh, hey, tell you what, let's do, let's do the giveaway. Uh, we'll do the giveaway. So my question, uh, and I always do giveaways on these live streams, uh, so if this is your first time here, well, if you answer this question correctly, I'll ship you a Yellow Productions Crew t-shirt anywhere in the world. And my question to you is, what percentage of Hawaii's economy is tourism? If you answer that question correctly, then uh, you will win a Yellow Productions Crew t-shirt that will ship anywhere. And, uh, you know, I actually, I wrote down this number because I said it earlier to make sure that I actually remember the number when people say it. And I have to have the right piece of paper. You know, this is the thing about preparing for these. People say, Chris, how long do you take to prepare for these videos and these live streams? Uh, I want to actually give good information to you all. And so I do prepare quite a bit. Um, Olivia wants to know what's my go-to dish to eat while in Hawaii. Garlic shrimp, for sure. Uh, you can check out, uh, like, I have a video on Giovanni's shrimp truck on the North Shore, uh, which is pretty good. I also love poke. Um, all right. So I'm seeing some people guess on what percentage of tourism. I'm seeing numbers like 95, 70, 65, 67, 75. None, none of those are the numbers yet. So uh, keep, keep trying. Um, I'm seeing more numbers. 70. Yeah, those numbers are all too high. All too high. Much lower. So... Um, Right. Uh, Jenny, she really likes the Dole Whip Plantation. Uh, the Dole Whip at the Dole Plantation. Uh, that is pretty tasty, which you can get at Disneyland as well. Um, so, 
We're getting some closer numbers here. Uh, the closer numbers we're getting, Kimberly says 21. We're getting closer. Sahil says 21. Those are not quite the number, but we're getting close. Waka says uh, I should eat some spam. Uh, spam is pretty good. Oh, and let's see. I see. I see somebody got the right answer, which is uh, Mimi three thousand. There we go, Mimi three thousand. Congratulations. The percentage of Hawaii's economy that uh, tourism makes up is twenty three percent. So congratulations, Mimi. Thanks everybody else uh, for giving a guess. I will send you a Yellow Productions T-shirt anywhere in the world that you want it. Uh, send me an email to Chris at yellow.net with two W's. Yellow.net with two W's, uh, or send me a message on Facebook. You'll find a link uh, to my Facebook page in the description below. If y'all did not win one and you want to buy one, you'll also find a link to my Etsy shop in the description of this video. Uh, Jenny says, uh, since all of the soup plantations were closed due to them being buffet style, when some of the Vegas buffets will remain but turn to cafeteria style, soup plantation could have done that too. Soup plantation could have done that too. It's very sad that uh, soup plantation didn't do that. Uh, and Vegas Mooch says, we went to the Giovanni Shrimp Talk truck on my recommendation. Totally worth the drive. That's awesome to hear, Vegas Smooch. I appreciate it. I also love eating the Japanese food in Hawaii because um, it's really delicious, right? Because uh, well, particularly on Oahu, because so many Japanese tourists come to Oahu um, and they really like Japanese food and they eat it when they're there. The fact that Japanese people from Japan uh, eat some of this food in Waikiki tells you that's actually really good. Um, Jenny says that all of the garlicky goodness seems to be on the shell of the shrimp in Hawaii. I don't know. I feel like I feel like it makes it inside too. You got to get that garlic, put it on the rice. Um, Imrap says, "What's the best thing to do for first timers in Hawaii? Uh, depends what island you're going to. Um, but I think for each island, I've got like things to do. So you can take a look at like Yellow Productions Maui things to do, Yellow Productions Kauai things to do." Um, Go to the beach, go for a swim, go for a hike. If you're going to Oahu, visit the Polynesian Cultural Center, visit the Luau, uh, and just drive around and just explore. I think that's the best thing about the islands is just kind of drive around and explore. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, other questions? Um, <laughs> You know, so many of you guess with all the numbers is making my thing go here in different pages, 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 pages back to find other questions. Well, uh, April says, uh, if I have any updates on Vegas, I hear June 4th is the tentative date for casinos to reopen. June 4th is the tentative date to reopen. Uh, rest assured, April, that I will have some Vegas updates later this week. The Governor of Nevada has a uh, press conference tomorrow on Tuesday. So sometime after that press conference on Tuesday, we'll have more official news on what's going on. So uh, I will have a Vegas update then. But June 4th is what the governor has said he is shooting for as the date to reopen casinos in Las Vegas. Um, uh, Sophie says some must-eats are uh, Leonard's Bakery and Wyola Shaved Ice. Leonard's Bakery is famous for their malasadas. They're these essentially like Portuguese donuts. They're like fried dough that they fill with different like tropical custards. They're really good. It's a, it's a Hawaii tradition, though they really don't uh, exist in Portugal all that much, which is pretty funny. Uh, and uh, Lockdown Travelers wonders if it's true that Hawaii has the highest resort fees in America. I think Las Vegas has the highest resort fees in America, frankly, uh, followed by New York City. Maybe then followed by Hawaii. Uh, so Vegas, New York, then Hawaii. Yeah, resort fees are evil. Um, I Heart Michelle says, how many days would I rent a car in Maui? I would rent a car for every day that I was in Maui, frankly, because it, it's cheaper to pick them up at the airport than it is in other places. Uh, and like you can only spend so much time sitting around at the beach. So I, I think it's important to have a car. Uh, Yoshi wants to know if I've ever heard of the Lenny face. I do not know what the Lenny face is. John wants to know if I like Macau. I do like Macau. Uh, Kimberly uh, wants to know my favorite island. It is Oahu. Spun says, uh, how long is a good family holiday length for a holiday in Hawaii? I would say at least a week, at least a week. I'd say a lot of people ask me and say, Chris, uh, 
He's like, should I go to multiple islands? I say, if you're going island hopping, don't spend any less than five days on an island. So no less than five days if you're going to Hawaii. You can spend like five days on Maui. You can spend five days on Oahu. What I really recommend is I recommend uh, like diving deep on an island. So if you're going to Maui, I recommend actually splitting your time. Maybe spend four days in South Maui and three days in North Maui. Same in Oahu. You could spend four days in Waikiki and you could spend three days in Koalina. The islands are big enough that there's a enough stuff to do in those different parts of the island. And if you stay at two different hotels, then you get to enjoy um, two different um, like beaches that your hotel is right on, which I think is pretty nice. James asked if the water in Oahu is close to 80 degrees. It is. The water in Oahu is quite warm. Um, uh, I've been to Hawaii probably 10 to 15 times, uh, and uh, Carlos, didn't I? Didn't I tell? I, I think I, I think I, I think I said hi to Topher for you early, but I will tell him that you that he is your favorite panda in the world. Topher, you are Carlos Pena's favorite panda in the world. I need to look at you when I'm doing that, not look at the camera. All right. Well, hmm. We'll take a final couple questions here. And uh, final questions are the ones that are still on my screen. Eric wants to know if I've eaten at Jollibee's. Jollibee's is a kind of like Filipino fast food restaurant. I have eaten there. It's decent. I don't I don't love it. Um, I love In-N-Out Burger. Uh, I don't love Jollibee's, but it's okay. Uh, Milko says, what's my best travel memory? I have so many great travel memories, but... One of my favorite travel destinations is in Nara, Japan. Nara, spelled N-A-R-A. Um, it's uh, a town that has a whole bunch of wild deer, and you can uh, feed the deer from your hand. Uh, and we were feeding the deer. We rented kimonos. So if you want to check out my video of that, search for Yellow Productions Nara, N-A-R-A, which is pretty fun. Um, Sahil wants to know if I've been to other Pacific islands like Tahiti. Uh, I have not been to Tahiti uh other Pacific islands. I've been to most of the Hawaiian islands, and I've been to uh, Guam as well. Uh, and Guam is definitely cheaper than Hawaii. Um, easy to travel to Guam because Guam, it's in the U.S., and it's not an international destination. And the flights there are pretty inexpensive, too. Uh, John asked if I like Macau. I did like Macau. Uh, I enjoyed Macau. Um, do I enjoy it more than Vegas? I have a whole video about uh, Las Vegas versus Macau that I did about two to three weeks ago. Uh, so, John, I'd encourage you to check that out. Uh, but uh, I love the food in Macau in particular. Uh, Sahil wants to know if I've heard from Brandon Torres, who was on the live streams a lot, and uh, he seems to have disappeared. Maybe because I'm doing the live streams at, like, different times during the COVID-19 thing. I don't know. He has not been on lately. So I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure where he is. Uh, and, uh, final note, uh, from Sheila wants to let everybody, uh, to not forget Matsumoto shave ice on the North shore in Oahu. It's the best. Actually, one of the things I love about doing these live streams, doing these videos is learning, uh, from all of you, uh, because you all know so much and I learn from all of you every time I do one of these things. So I love your advice and I love the suggestions that you're giving to your fellow travel community. And Brandon is here. Excellent. Brandon. Thank you for being here. It's great to hear. And Sahil will be happy to hear that as well. And I am happy to hear that as well. Um, all right. Well, with that, take a last sip of my Hawaiian sun. When's the next live stream? Well, make sure you subscribe. Click the bell, turn notifications. It'll be later this week. Definitely talking about Las Vegas because there's lots to talk about in Las Vegas too. But I thought you might enjoy the break today talking about the aloha state of hawaii well with that i won't say goodbye because i'll see you all in the next video <laughs>